Okay, so now, I always say that the young people ask the most um, interesting questions. Okay, so the adults can learn too. <laughs> okay, so first of all, this may not be so difficult, but it is actually very commonly asked today. Is taking medicine, uh, does taking medicine mean we are not trusting God? Medicine, right? So if a Christian eats medicine, does it mean that we are not trusting God? Hmm? Okay? Now, this is very common. So, don't laugh at that question. Maybe we live in this church, so we know the answer. But I remember when I was um, visiting a Christian in a hospital in Singapore, um, the mother was there, the son was very ill, he has cancer, and he's lying there. The doctor says he will have to take this series of medicine. So, I was visiting and... Um, prayed for him and talk about the medicine the mother keeps saying no he will not take the medicine you know we trust in God we trust in God and therefore we claim the promises that God will heal him so she keeps saying no you you cannot pray for God to heal him because God will heal him number one <laughs> number two um, we will not have him take the medicine because it means we have no faith in God <laughs> right. Okay, so now, so does taking medicine mean that the Christian don't trust in God? Now, there's a particular group of um, cult. They are called the Jehovah Witnesses. JW, Jehovah Witnesses. Now, they don't um, advocate taking of medicine because they believe God heals them. So, should Christian go for medication or total reliance to God? That's the question. Should Christian go for medication or total reliance to God? Okay, so now I ask you, um, is taking medicine wrong? No. All right. Shalomia says no. Uh, prove your answer from the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> any, any example from the Bible? Whenever we say yes or no, it must be supported from evidences in the Bible, right? Mm. Can you think of situations in the Bible where it tells you, well, oh, look, taking medicine is not wrong? Okay. Wow, okay. All right. So, do you have, or you're going to flip and hope that you find one <laughs> randomly? Okay, so I guess you don't have. Amberly? It's not wrong. It's not wrong. Okay. But how do you know? Because you like taking medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, it's not wrong. <laughs> how? How do we know? Always remember from scriptures, right? So you just think, are there instances in the scriptures where um, people did take medicine? God or not? Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. Is it wrong to take some drinks or something to help? Okay, let's, let's read 1 Timothy 5.23 Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach sick and thine often infirmities. Okay, so now here is Timothy always having stomach problems. Okay, so now um, he said take a little wine. He's not asking him to go and drink alcohol like we normally associate it. The wine, they always have wine, the alcohol. They mix it with water to clean the water. Understand? So all the while, Timothy did not even want to touch anything alcoholic. Paul says, mix the alcohol, not drink alcohol, to clean the water so that they drink it. So is it wrong to use alcohol to clean something? Is alcohol medicinal? Milk? Alcohol is. Okay? So you know before they give you an injection, then they take a cotton and then they wipe your skin, right? You know what they're doing? They take alcohol to wipe away any germs before they inject you. So that's medicine. All right? So that's one example. Any other example? Is it wrong to be a doctor? Where's Colin and Fiona? Not here. All right? They are doctors. Any other doctors? Doctors? Medical doctors? Jaslyn may want to be a doctor. No, no. So now, 
Uh, so if taking medicine wrong means it is a sin to be a doctor, right? It would be. Because doctors prescribe medicine. Hmm? So are there doctors in the Bible? Who was a doctor? Luke, right? Luke, the physician. Now many times Christ, um, Paul mentioned Luke, the physician. Now you, you turn to Colossians chapter 4, verse 14. Okay, Luke, the physician. Now I say Luke, the, physi the beloved physician and Demas greet you. So is it wrong to be a doctor, a physician? No. This would be 10 years after Luke was, was called. Luke was originally a physician. And 10 years later, he seems to be still practicing. That's why Paul will call him Luke, the beloved physician. Did Paul say, Luke, the sinful doctor who's still a doctor and people should not take medicine and he's still a doctor. No, he said the beloved physician. Okay? Now, other, other examples in the Bible. Can you think of any? Can you turn to Jeremiah 8.22? Jeremiah 8.22. God himself talked about doctors. Now, I want to be very clear. I'm giving you extra verses so that you are fixed once and for all in your heart. There's nothing wrong with medicine. Jeremiah 8.22 Okay. Is there no balm in Gilead? Balm is uh, medication. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Well, of course, God is talking about their spiritual health. But God did talk about medication. God did talk about um, doctors um, to portray the picture. If it was sinful to have medication, sinful to have doctors, then God would not use it as an example, right? God used it as an example. Okay? So those are just some examples. Um, what about... There's so many, actually. Um, now, when, when the Samaritan found the man who was injured found in the pit. What did he do to him? Do you remember um, Ray? What did he do to the, this man who was found, the Samaritan who found the man, the Jew that was in the pit and injured? Before that. Before he brought him to the... Alright, you know. He put medicine on him. How do we know that? Turn to Luke chapter 10, verse 34. Okay, let's, so it says, And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. Pouring in oil and wine, medication. All right, medicated oil. And why wine? Why do you think he poured in wine? Samantha, why do you think he poured in wine? It's like, oop, wine. <laughs> wow, sounds painful. Uh, the infection, right? Because wine contains alcohol. That's why just now I told you, they clean the body first. Huh? They use alcohol. All right, so pour in oil and wine. So people, did he say, uh, oh, you're a Jew. All those open wounds. No need, no need anything. Since you're a Jew, God will heal you. No. You pour oil and wine and God describe it as a good act. Okay, so among many other things, um, in the Bible, he mentions of many different concoction of um, herbs and all that for medicinal reason. God will talk about gall, um, myrrh, uh, frankincense, uh, cumin, figs, all these things. They mix it together to form medicine. Okay, God mentioned all these things. So now, is it wrong to take medicine or to be treated medically? No. From the Bible, no. God never condemned that. Okay? But today, because the charismatics, they keep teaching that um, it is wrong. God will heal. And it's very sad. You know what happens in the end? There are people that will end up... Um, 
Do you think it's a good thing? Maybe I'll ask you this thing. Do you think it's a good thing to tell people, no, 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 no? Uh, when you tell the people the wrong thing, what would actually result? What do you think would result? Can you turn to Second Peter? Okay, Second Peter. Now, because people teach the wrong things, people teach the wrong things, chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2, shall we read verses 1 and 2 together? But there together false prophets who also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring them upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Notice when people teach the wrong doctrines, what happens in verse 2? Um, what happens in verse 2, Joshua? The way of truth shall be evil spoken of. What does it mean? Now, is it truth to say that Christians should not see doctors, should not eat medicine? No, it's not truth. All right? But they make it truth. It's all Christians should be like that. They make it a false truth. And what happened? The way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Christianity will be evil spoken of. How, how will it end up Christianity will be evil spoken of? Shen Wei. Well, because of me not to take medicine and they die because of your advice, everyone's going to be like, it's all your fault and anything is done is all your Right? So when someone is sick, and is it wrong to take medicine? No. And medicine would have helped the person. Did God... Um, Use doctors, yes. Luke, for example. And then they reject all this. But God never said no. And then the person dies. A simple thing that could have been cured. But you keep telling him, no, you must have faith. God will heal you. So you don't see doctor and don't take any medicine. If you do, you have no faith in God. That is false faith anyway. And then the person dies. What would the family say? Assuming the family is non-believers. The parents will look at you and say, Christianity is false. It's a wicked religion. It's stupid. So the way of truth, is it evil spoken of? It is. All right, so understand that. So don't teach a false doctrine when it is not in the Bible. Repeatedly, um, in the Bible, there were doctors, there were evidences of God talking about medicine. medicine. God never condemned medicine. Okay? Um, yeah. Hmm? Say again. Is there a positive, command? There a positive yeah. command? There are things in the Bible. Well, but Paul told Timothy positively, go um, make some wine. Make a fluid that is medicinal for your stomach. All right. So Paul said, um, Paul positively say, do that. Yeah. So so that there are. Um, and I guess in the Bible, when there are no, um, um, no explicit command, it doesn't mean it is not so. Yeah, but the fact is, God did mention many. Yes, someone has an explicit command. Um, what about uh, when it says that when you're sick, you need to go to the elder to put their hand on you and heal? And then it also mentions anointing with oil. Is that medicinal oil or just? Yes. Yeah, so that perhaps is an example. All right, so um, in the case of when a person is sick, what should the Christian do in the New Testament? Hmm? What should the Christian do? The Christian should ask the elder to pray over him and then to anoint him with oil. That's in Peter, right? Where's that? James 5. Okay, so let's turn to James chapter 5, yes. Okay, so now, James 5.14, I think this is a good example. Let's read together. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Okay, now, is that prayer required? Yes, but is it only prayer? No, there were the request that they also anoint oil um, can be different kind of oil um, that would relieve symptoms 
But does it mean that Christians should say, oh, actually there's another question afterwards. Um, so there is a combination of prayer. We must pray. Okay, this is God's command. And there is um, the medicinal oil. Um, it could be, I can't remember, it could be different concoction of oil that will relieve certain sickness, certain symptoms that they know about, they use them. Okay, so Paul was not against, uh, James was not against using any medicinal um, effects on people. Although he said, just pray and then that's it. Okay. Um, okay, so now, anyone else want to ask anything or add anything? Say again? Correct. Uh, you cannot go by instances mm. of something happening as you mentioned in the Bible. Mm. So if that is the case, uh, you should go by explicit teaching rather than instance of somebody practicing some, something. Um, so like this one, um, it's a command. Um, it's, a imperative, it's a imperative command. Is there a mean, any among you, Sip? Let him call. So let him call would be um, probably, uh, I have to check, it's probably um, in the imperative, in a, what is called a hot, hortatory imperative, means it is um, a command. You know, let him, let this be done. Let him call the elders and let them pray, anointing him. Yeah, so, and does God specifically say make medicine? If you want, you can turn to those of you who are doing Ezekiel, you will come across Ezekiel chapter 47. Ezekiel chapter 47. Okay, and then we have one more verse afterwards. Ezekiel 47. Verse 12. Ezekiel 47, verse 12. Okay, shall, shall we read verse 12 together? And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months. Because their waters they issue out of their sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and leave thereof for medicine. Right? For medicine. So God did talk about medicinal purposes of some of these things that He created. Okay, for medicine. And I guess the most explicit one would be Luke 5.31. Luke 5.31 was God against doctors. Seeing doctors, Luke 5.31, shall we read together? Luke 5.31, And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. So Jesus did say, sick people need doctors. Of course, he will then compare it to a spiritual lesson. All right? if, he, if he thinks that sick people should not see doctor, then he would not want to use such an example. Correct? Okay, so I think we have um, evidences from the Bible that um, God talks about. He created things that will become medicine, that can be used for medicine. Christ himself um, said that, yes, sick people do need doctors. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Um, okay, so now the question is this. Is it then for the, Christ for the Christians to say, I depend on medicine then. No. Why? Who do you depend on? God. All right. So as, as you take the medicine, who do you put your trust in? God. When you see the doctor, who do you put your trust in? God. Right? You do not put your trust, as in all your trust in the doctor, all your trust in the medicine. There are some people who don't pray. They are sick. The first thing, see doctor, um, get medicine and they just keep talking about all the different medicine that, that you can possibly they just keep going around what medicine do you do what medicine do you think what medicine do you think right so what is an example of trusting in God while seeing doctors and taking medicine how can you do that and believe how do you trust in God at the same time take medicine and see doctors what do you do before you see the doctor pray right what do you pray for Good health, 
but you're going to see the doctor. So what do you pray for? Yeah. Yes, that the doctor will have wisdom. All right. So you pray that the doctor will know how to diagnose you. Then God will use the doctor to diagnose you. Right? So um, God will use the doctor to issue the right medicine for you. And God will use that to help you. Right? So we still pray. We still depend on God. We don't just... That's why it's not good for a Christian to say, you know, you know, I was sick and then I went to see this doctor. This doctor is so clever and then this doctor gave me this medicine. Oh, this medicine is so good. All of you should take this medicine. Where's God in it? Right? We should be thankful. We say, thank God he led me to the right doctor. And thank God that the doctor issued me the right medicine. Yeah. Right? So it's still God, ultimately. You must understand that. Okay? So that's why the Bible says, let him, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Now that's an that's understanding that we depend on God. It's the same as do you depend on your bank account or you depend on God? You depend on God, right? Your bank account can be wiped out. The bank can close down. Right or not? Um, but you still depend on God. God is the one who will protect everything. If God chooses not to protect, then so be it. Okay, so we continue to depend on God, not men. Um, so that's why we announce in church, right? Do we announce in church, pray for so and so, the person is sick. Pray for so and so, the person is seeing doctor. Pray for so and so, they're going for operation. Do we do that? We do that because it's biblical. Let them call for the elders of the church. In other words, let, that, let the church leaders know that the church may pray for them. Okay, or go visit them, pray, and then also at the same time, human resource, responsibility, anointing him with oil. Take care of him physically. All right, physically. Okay, so now, those are the things that we see in the Bible. Okay, so now, I hope that this, this settles. Does taking medicine means not trusting in God? Yes or no? Yes and no. <laughs> right or not? When is it a yes? When is taking medicine not trusting in God? Hmm? When you trust in medicine. <laughs> right? When you simply trust in the medicine, you, there's no God involved. You don't pray and ask God to help. You don't pray and ask God to heal. You just say, oh, medicine, medicine, medicine. Right? Okay? So now, it can... It can also mean that you're not trusting in God. It can also mean that you're trusting in God, that God will provide through men the right medicine. Okay? So we have to answer. Right? Mabel, do you have a question? No? All right. Okay, so now these are some examples. Now, another thing that is um, asked here. But then they say, but when Jesus was on earth, he healed by miracles. Right? He healed by miracles. So basically the basis of the charismatics is see Jesus and the apostles healed by miracles. So we do not need to see doctor, just believe that God will perform miracles. How do you answer them? John, you want to try? How do we answer them? And see, see, all these miracles, you are so faithless, you all, Christ can heal you by miracles. And then they quote to you, Jesus say, I change not. Huh? I'm the same yesterday, today, forever. You have no faith that Jesus did not change. Right? So two parts of the question. Because there's a common answer, right? So they say Jesus and the apostles healed mirac miraculously. So we should trust them. Trust Christ God. to do so. Hmm? God is God of everything. God is God of everything. Including it's a God who made the natural laws. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's a God who created the medicinal plants and everything. Mm. And it's a God who gives wisdom to the human being. It's a common grace. But they said, but Jesus did not use all those. Uh, no, 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 no. Mm. So the natural, the, the, the first step is to rely, we rely every day mm. on the natural laws obeying, mm. performing perfectly. Mm. So when we do that, we also should realize it's God who keeps the order in mm. society. Right. That should be the first, pro the first point of trusting God. Mm. We rely on natural laws continually. Uh, With prayer. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And other thing is, in case of Jesus, Jesus, one of the things, uh, one of the uh, points that mm. Jesus is the Christ, is mm. all the miracles he will do. Mm. So, yep. And also it shows he is the God who can walk all over Correct. So, why did Jesus perform miracles? Jesus performed miracles to prove that he is God. We just studied that on Friday, right? In Youth 180. He said, believe me for the work's sake. He said, I did all this to prove to you that I am the Christ. Why don't you believe? 
Okay, so Jesus performed that. Now, do, today, um, is Jesus on earth? No. Um, do we need to prove that Jesus is God? The Bible says so, so we use the word of God. And the Bible uses the tense. It says, these things were written. means these things, we just simply tell people that Jesus did this. We don't have to keep repeating the miracles. Okay, so that is what we must be able to understand. But what about God changes not? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Really, your classmates say, Jesus is the same yesterday and today forever. He healed like that last time. You must have faith that he will do it now. Don't see doctors. So, how do you answer? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. <coughs> he didn't do it in the Old Testament. He, like, he is the same, but, for example, like when he came up to this earth, he took a new form. So, in some sense, he is the same, but in other ways, he is not. And he is still able to heal, but he, because the word is complete today, he do not need these miracles. Okay, so we do not need these miracles. And that's the first part of the question. Yes, because the word is complete. Uh, that's in Corinthians. That which is perfect is come. That which is in part will be done away. All these miracles, tongue speaking, they are, they are all partial gifts. They will be done away with. But now the question still is, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, forever. Um, how do you answer that, Joshua? Hmm. Right? All right, so you understand? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible verse. Is he saying that what is the same about him? He's talking about his character. His character never changes. Okay, his attribute never changes. But does it mean he, will, he, he is bound not to ever do things differently? No. All right? When he do things differently, his character still didn't change. He's holy. He is... He is, his being, his wisdom, his power never change. His holiness, justice, goodness and truth never change. All these attributes do not change. So when we say Jesus does not change, please remember what it is about. He did not promise that he will never change the way he worked. Did Jesus change the way he worked? In the Old Testament, how did people receive forgiveness? How? Say again. Um, what must they do? Okay, um, they must make sacrifices, right? They must make sacrifices. They must make sacrifices. Today, are, today are we still making sacrifices? Or is it, oh no, Jesus changed. Right? But it's still salvation by faith? Is it still the same? Okay, now let me explain to you. Old Testament sacrifices. New Testament, any more sacrifices? No sacrifices. Alright, no sacrifices. Now, this is there a change? Oh no, Jesus is no more the same. No? Is Jesus the same? Does Jesus still save by faith? Did Jesus say by faith in the Old Testament? Hmm? And but he said yes. Right? But they offer sacrifices. How is faith involved? They do, are they putting their faith in the sacrifice, in the animal being killed? Who are they putting their faith in? God. Jesus Christ that will come one day. He represents Christ. So did God change the way in which he saved people? No, it's still by grace through faith. Did God change his character in how he saved people? No. Correct? Still the same. But did he change how? Yes. Alright? So if Jesus chose to heal miraculously last time, must and he doesn't now, he doesn't now, has he changed? No, he hasn't. Okay, so we must understand what, what is change. Jesus said when Jesus said, I change not. I'm God, I change not. He's saying my character will never change. That's why it's a great comfort to trust in God, right? What God promised, He will do. But He may do it differently, right or not? If Jesus must deal with us all the same, then we will all go through exactly the same thing in life, right? But we don't, right? 
Some God put through trials, some God blesses, some God don't. In terms of physical wealth, it's up to him. Okay? So his character does not change. So that's how you answer them. So when people say, Oh, are you saying that Jesus changes? You say, No, Jesus can change the way he works. When Jesus was on earth, did he change the way he healed people? He changed also. Sometimes you say, Be healed, then the person is healed. Sometimes he will spit on his hand and then mix with clay and then mix. If Jesus cannot change anything, uh, so blind people also heal by spitting. All right? People cannot walk, also must heal by spitting. He's God. Right? He, he changed, he used different methods. Doesn't mean he has changed. Okay? So remember that. So you must know what the Bible means. Otherwise, you say, oh yeah, that's true. Uh. Yeah, I think I should not take medicine anymore. Jesus doesn't change. He will still heal me miraculously. No. Okay, now, so, now, these gifts are withdrawn. You must know, the, are there cases in the Bible where Paul continued forever to heal by miracles? No. When you read, there come a stage where even Paul himself, Paul, did, Paul healed with miracles, he did. But at some stage, even when people were sick, he did not heal them anymore because it's withdrawn. Even he cannot heal anymore. Can you turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20. Let's read together. Eras, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20. Erastus abode in Corinth, but Trophimus have I left in Militum sick. Right? Did, now, Paul used to heal by miracles. But by this time, did Paul heal, um, did Paul heal Trophimus? No, he did not, right? He left Trophimus in this place, Militum, in his sick state. Right or not? Paul, did not, Paul could not heal him. Or is it Paul, Paul is very wicked. He don't, like, he don't like Trophimus. So he said, I'll leave him there sick. Nah, 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 nah. I'll leave him sick. Right? No, Paul... Miracles stopped. It stopped. All these healings stopped. Even Paul could not heal. Paul himself had a thorn in his flesh. He had a physical trouble, a physical challenge. What did he say? I prayed three times that God would remove it, but God did not. Right? Paul could have miracle finger. Be healed. No, he could not. He prayed and kept praying. Okay? Um, it's the same in Philippians 2.25. Okay, Philip, you just copied on Philippians 2.25. The same, Epaphroditus came to Paul from Rome. He was very ill. Paul did not heal him miraculously. Paul could not anymore. He stopped at a certain time. They were withdrawn. Understand? Okay, so they were withdrawn. Okay, so now we must believe that at some point, even in the Bible, is very clear. The miraculous healing did not continue. Okay, it has nothing to do with Christ changing or not. Christ now works through a different means. But does it mean that there's no miracle healing today? God will never heal miraculously. Hmm? Not true, right? God can choose. God is sovereign. He can choose to heal mirac miraculously. But we cannot twist his arm. God, you cannot change. Huh? Last time you heal like that, so God, you must heal my mother like that. God, I'm going to twist your arm and then if you don't, then God, you are not God. You changed. Can you do that? You cannot. Why? It's up to God. But does God, is there any evidence that God ever healed miraculously? Even in our day and age? Yes. Okay, my mother herself. The doctor already declared that she will be blind. Right? The church prayed. And then she got healed. No one can understand. When I met to the doctor, they say, I, the doctor said, I cannot explain. I don't know why, but you're healed. <laughs> right? But can I? But prayer is there. When a Christian is sick, he must pray. The first thing to jump to is not medicine. He must pray. All right? Either pray that the Lord will heal. If he's not getting better, see a doctor. All right? ask, the, ask the Lord to lead you to the right doctor, use the right medicine. Now, but, so prayer did. But can we say God is unfaithful, God healed Joseph's mother, then didn't heal my mother? No, it is up to God. All right? Does miracle happen? It happens. Now, what is miracle? First of all, we must define. Huh? They say, no, 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 because this person asks. Now, how do we explain? 
Okay, so the person asked the second question. Since there are miraculous healing or chasing the devils out today, and it exists, and we see it, are these from God or from the devil? Why don't we believe that they still exist? So they say, why don't we believe that this miracles, miraculous healing still exists, casting out of demons still exists? Why don't we believe it? They still exist, we see it. Who have seen miraculous healing before? Based on the charismatic kind of miraculous healing. I put my hand like Paul, heal. My shadow walked past like Peter, you know, just the shadow of Peter healed the person, right? Now, they said, yeah, all this, have you seen it today? Zero. All, right. all these people claim, when they claim healing and all that. Now, in the Bible, when it's a miraculous healing, you must understand the term miraculous healing. Miraculous healing is, it cannot be explained by ordinary forces. That is one definition. A miraculous healing cannot be explained by um, ordinary forces. What is ordinary forces? You, you, you dislocated your arm and the bone is sticking out. Alright? But the calling comes. And then he pray for you and the church pray. And then he pops it in because he's a doctor. He knows what to do. And then, whoa, God, com, 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 God did a miracle. You, you were sick, then you took medicine. Then you were healed. God did a miracle. No, it cannot be explained. In the Bible, when God performs a miracle, it is no human explanation number one and number two they are organic healing you know it's organic healing means it is a real biological change that you cannot explain an example is what when christ healed he did not choose to heal people who used to see you know he was not blind before then he became blind and then christ healed him christ chose to heal people who were born blind you know it's born blind it means the moment you're born all those things are not connected biologically not connected blind or maybe no eyeball right? blind from birth or originally at birth people who could not walk born born without ability to walk okay means they may not have the right bone structure and all that when christ healed it was something that he could make the person see make the person walk when he when organically biologically he could not and could not be explained after that so today if someone is born blind if you know anyone born without eyeballs then you go you the preacher goes spit in his hand take mud from the floor dead in his eyes and then suddenly eyeballs grow people were born arms short it grows back okay literally organic biological Many doctors are very curious about this Christian faith healing. Many of them did many studies and they all come to the conclusion it's not a miracle. They're all just, there's always a natural expli explainable reason. That's all. Okay? So today, is it true that miraculous healing exists and we see? No. If there is, means today, what should the preachers do? All hurry up, go to cancer center, and then heal all the cancer patients. Why not a single miracle, miracle healer ever dare to do that? Because in their heart they know they cannot. Huh? If it is true. Now, these people heal on demand, no? They say, arise, and then they arise. Be healed, then they be healed. They, on demand. Can't these preachers do that? They cannot. Okay. In fact, very often these are in environment that are they make you feel like you're healed. So most of this, I came to church with a very bad headache, and then the preacher prayed, and then my headache is gone. It's a miracle. Is that a miracle? Headaches come and go. Maybe you didn't drink enough water. Then you drink water. The headache go off. Oh God, healed me miraculous. They want to believe in this kind of things. You know, in the end, many of those who do all this. They were exposed as tricksters, right? I tell you many times. They are exposed as tricksters. It's all tricks. And then finally what happened? Came out in magazines. Came out in newspapers. Now, do you remember we read the verse? The way of truth is what? Evil spoken of. 
It become a joke. Christianity has become a joke. Understand? If it is not true, it is not true. Let's not try and push it. Okay, so now, is it true that mir mir miraculous healing exists today? There is no evidence. Does miracle happen? Yes, but it is not on demand like last time. I can walk up to Ray E and say, Ray E, be shorter. Shoot, grow short. You know? Walk up to me, Joseph, be taller. And then Joseph goes taller. On demand. Say, yeah. Uh, no, when the, when, the, when the, yeah. So the current one, they cannot. They cannot. The apostles could. Jesus Christ could. On the spot, they would choose to do it. It happens. That is miraculous healing. Today, there is no such thing. No recorded events. Okay? But do people get healed like that? Yes. If God chooses to. But it's not on demand. I prayed for my mom. The church prayed for my mom. She got healed. Miraculously, it happens. But it's not on demand. I just, okay, the pastor goes say, Oh, I heal you. And they got healed. No, it doesn't happen like that anymore. Miraculous healing in the Bible was like that. They just walk up to the person, be healed. Be healed. Okay, so you cannot say that we see it exists today. It's a different kind. Different kind. And then what about chasing out of? Chasing out of devil. Chasing out of devil. Okay, so now actually there's this question. Are there demon possession today? Got or not? Can, can have, alright, can exist. Now, what is the way to solve demon possession? Is it to go up like the apostles? I command you, evil spirit, to leave this person. Is it like that? Now, in the past, the apostles could do it. The demons had to obey them. Is it for today? Just like it's miracles for today. Not anymore. Okay? Not anymore. Now, today, if a person is possessed by a devil, what do you do? What do you do? I know you want to run away as far as possible. <laughs> right? Run as far as possible. What do you do? Really, what would you do? Preach the gospel to them. Why? He that is without. <laughs> He that is, the, you say when, so we say preach the gospel to the person, okay? Because when the person believes in Christ, then he that is in the person is greater than the one that is trying to control the person, right? So you, when you are the temple of the Holy Ghost, who dwells in you? The Holy Ghost. Is the Holy Ghost more powerful or demons more powerful? Of course, the Holy Ghost, right? He is God. So the way to solve demon possession is not to go and cast, cast, cast. We are, not, we are not apostles. This morning I just preached, right? Only these 12 apostles. We are not apostles today. We are not Jesus Christ. It's not meant for us. They did all that to prove their apostleship so that people believe what they write. Christ did to prove that He's the Messiah. Alright? It is not for us to prove anything. Now, okay, so you say preach the gospel, right? Now, this man is screaming and jumping and demon-possessed people can be very strong, alright? He's going to jump and kill you. What are you going to do? Keep preaching the gospel when he's pinning you down and choking you? <laughs> okay, restrain him. I'm going to shout the gospel into his ears. <laughs> now, it's very dangerous, right? Demon possession is real. Okay, it can be very dangerous. Now, the one thing that we always advise is now some of these people when they're demon possessed there are moments where they are lucid just like in the bible right many of the demon possession cases at times they're normal there are times they kill people right in the, when they're normal especially make use of that time to preach the gospel to them and get them to read the bible get them to understand the bible all right so when he's screaming and jumping well you can try and preach but you also need to be wise okay because they can be very dangerous now remember the cases where the people went to, went to cast out demons and then after that, the demons jump on them. Hmm? So it's very dangerous. Huh? So don't play a fool with all those things. That's why children, don't play. What's that game huh, now? In school they play? Charlie. Huh? Oh, Charlie Charlie. Is that? Oh, is that? It's a... Charlie Charlie. Yeah. Alright, Charlie Charlie. Anyone know what Charlie Charlie? Okay, you don't know, it's good. If you hear about it, run away. Alright? Charlie, Charlie, yeah, sorry. Recently, the girl was playing with her app. She was able to 
news. Oh, news. was in the news. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, Charlie Charlie is, well, no different from my younger days. It's, it's uh, playing with black magic. All right. So they call the demons out. All right. Charlie Charlie. I don't know why it's called Charlie. I can't remember. All right. Charlie Charlie. Sounds so cute, right? But it's not cute. It's not funny. All right. They try and get the demons to respond to them. Okay, so don't play with those things. Don't play with darkness. Very dangerous. Okay, say, so no, I have the Holy Ghost in me. Don't be foolish. Christ said, don't be foolish. All right? So when Christ said, don't I'll be foolish, we don't be foolish. Okay, so schools are very popular. Have you heard about this, Shalomia? Charlie, Charlie? No? Okay, um, Jennifer? No? Okay, so when you hear that, your friends playing with that, that is what it is. Playing with black magic, playing with dark forces and commanding demons, okay? So don't. Okay. Now, the next thing is this. So the person asks this, do they exist? No. But the kind of miracles that existed in the Bible, where, where the apostles could command, where Christ could command, that kind of miraculous healing, do not exist today. Do miracles healing today happen? It can happen. Okay? But not like the way it was in the Bible. Okay, so now that. And then the person asks this. Um, let me see what else. Okay, so the person asked this. Uh, well, there is. Well, we should actually ask this question. Um, no. Let me find. Okay, so now here, back to this question about health. Does the Lord wants us to live healthy life? Because most of the time we live neglect we, we neglect our bodies because we study and work. Wow. You have studied so hard until you neglect your body, do you? No? <laughs> Alright, so this person say, Wow, well, this must be a hard working student. Wow, well, I study so hard I don't sleep, I don't eat, then we neglect our body. So does God want us to have live healthy lives? Physically healthy life. Does God the question is, does God want us to live physically healthy life? Okay. Now the question is, why does God want you to live physically healthy life? Why does God want you to live physically healthy life? Uh, let me see who I've been asked. Hmm? Okay, does he doesn't want us to live unhealthy life? Now, um, can't do anything, right? Can't do anything. So God wants us to live healthy life so that we can use health to serve Him. Our health is for service. Afterwards, are you going down for lunch? Some of us are. Before we go for Obok we're going to eat. Why do you eat? Because you love food. We eat because we want to have energy and health to serve God at the Obok home. Understand that? So does God want us to live healthy life? The question is, why does God want us to live healthy life? Now, does God want us to live healthy life? So that is, oh, God wants me to be very healthy. I want to be like the bodybuilder. Alright? And then I go build up all my muscles. And then I look very healthy. I'm very, very muscular looking. Because God wants me to be healthy. I'll be extra healthy even. Look at my muscles. It's pointless. What is health for? Pointless. Understand? Hey, uh, young people, I hope you understand that. Huh? Why do you exercise? Because to be healthy. Doesn't put full stop there. Because I want to be healthy and be able to serve God with my health, using my health. Why do you pray to be healed? Why do you pray to be healed, Jasmine? Because I hate the feeling of a headache. Yeah? So I want my headache to go away so that I can concentrate on reading the Bible. Hmm? Everything is for God. You know, there's this, this, this man bodybuilder and then he was an interview on TV <laughs> this interview on TV then the, the interviewer said oh you're a bodybuilder you won a lot of awards you must be so healthy he said yeah I eat healthy he said oh I sleep well I make sure I sleep I make sure I take care of my body I, I'm very healthy he said whoa he said why do you do that then the man stand up and show his muscle <laughs> alright then he sat down then he asked again why do you why do you become so muscular then he stand up again and do do do, do all sorts of things. Then the guy says, like, "I'm not getting the answer." So why do you be healthy and exercise and look so good? Then he stand up and do 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 do. 
Then the person basically comes to the conclusion, you do that because you want to look good. <laughs> it's not a show of your look, 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 look. That's all. Because the guy simply, there's no other reason but to look good. Do we want to be healthy because of that? Does God want us to be healthy? Yes. Not to look good to other people. I want to be healthy so that I wear these clothes. Whoa, I look so good. Right? It's not that. I want to be healthy so that I can serve God without hindrance. But sometimes God allows sickness. Sometimes in sickness, we serve Him even better. So it's up to God. Okay? Up to God. Sometimes God leaves sickness behind. You remember Uncle Patrick who passed away recently to be with the Lord? He always shared, if not for my cancer, I would not have turned to God. Because of cancer, he turned to God. So is sickness always evil? Does God want us to be healthy without sickness? Not necessarily. God sometimes allows us to fall sick, very sick even. Through that, we come to know Him. Through that, we get saved. Okay? Or, or be more careful in our walk with God. Alright, so that is about health. Then he says, Now, Can God take care of your body? When you don't have a choice, you have to serve Him very hard. Can God take care of your body such that you don't fall sick? Hmm? Sometimes you don't have a choice. It's the, the load of the ministry, the load of um, family, and then for a period you don't have a choice. Can you think of a servant of God that was like that? Not a Singaporean for sure. You get the hint already, the clue. He didn't eat for many, many days. Hmm? Huh? Well, the Lord, yeah, the Lord Jesus, definitely one of them. Who else? Elijah, for example. But this man, wow, never eat 40 days, 40 nights. Moses, right? Moses, for 40 days, 40 nights. He fasted 40 days, 40 nights. Is it possible not to eat for 40 days, 40 nights and, and live? Moses did. But are we called to go and fast for 40 days, 40 nights? No, alright? But when there's something that happened, God can enable you? Yes, God can. But don't be a hero. Alright? I will be Moses. I won't eat 40 days, 40 nights, 3 times. No, Moses did it. I did it 5 times. It's foolish, alright? So... So that God can take care of your body. So don't think, don't have this concept. I must wake up and exercise. I must do all these exercises so that I'm very healthy. And then so healthy until because of your exercise regime, you have no time to study God's word. You have no time to serve God. But you're very healthy. Say, no, no, I must be healthy because I must take care of my body. It's the temple of the Holy Ghost. All right, that's an excuse. Okay? So, so that... I hope you are very clear about that. So Jennifer, why do you exercise? Why do you keep healthy? So that you can use your health to serve God, right? So you want to be healthy so that you have energy, have strength to serve God, all right? So we be healthy because of that reason, right? Children, understand that? Why do you want to be healthy? To serve God, right? If you're unhealthy, if God allow you to fall sick, should you still serve God? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so some people give that excuse. Ah, I'm very weak. I always fall sick. So I should not serve God. Not true. Alright, not true. Okay, so... Um, okay. So we answered the question, can people nowadays still get demon possessed? Yes. They can. One case, just got possessed and died. Right? So don't play with um, de don't play with Charlie Charlie. What should we do if they have been demon possessed? We also answer that question. What do you do? Call Ghostbusters. That's what the joke is on. Who do you know what do you do? You preach the gospel so that the person gets saved. When the person is saved, the evil spirits cannot conquer him anymore. You have the Holy Spirit in him. Alright, so that's what we do. Okay, so not too long back, someone came to our church and said, I'm demon-possessed. I'm demon-possessed. And kept asking me um, to do something. And then some people said, oh, go and cast up, go and cast up. So I said, no, that is not 
what the New Testament. I'm not an apostle, capital A apostle. I'm not Jesus Christ. The way is to get the person saved because of the principle. He that is in you is greater than he that is without. So I say the main thing is to get the person to confirm the person's salvation, get the person to be saved. All right, and then you know sometimes people come. Um, we do not know. Sometimes people have all this, and I've seen in my own church long time ago. They want attention. They want attention. So they say many things. They're not saved, but they want attention. They say I'm demon possessed, or then the people will do a lot of things for them. I remember Doctor Doctor Ku shared. There is a church in Singapore. It's a BP church. It's called Jurong huh? Galilee Galilee BP Church. Okay, I want to cover this because the person asks this and it's very important. You must know our church history. Why must we know history? So that it do not repeat itself. The devil will use the same historical things to do to attack the church. There was a preacher. There was a pastor called Philip Heng. A BP pastor. The church is next to Kerry Pandan. So those of you who go to Kerry Pandan, it's the church just next to it. There's this pastor Kerry in Kerry Pandan who keep teaching this doctrine of casting out demons. All right. So he keep everything casting out demons, casting out demons. Oh, he just keep preaching about it. And then people who are sick and come and tell him, I'm possessed with the demon of eating pork. All right. And they say, Oh, then we will do this, do that, you know, or whatever. And then Dr. Ku was a Bible college student then. Dr. Ku said, oh, they were asked to go. So they'll pray overnight, then whole night. Say, in the name of Jesus, I cast, cast whole night. They keep doing it. Right? Then the whole church was just obsessed with, with this kind of activities. And in the end, it split the church. It split the church. It caused a lot of problems in the church. All right? Because it's not what God wants us to do. We are not apostles, capital A apostles. We are not Jesus Christ. It is simply getting people saved. And sometimes many of these, they are not even believers. I've gone through many of, I've gone through this myself in, in church, my own church also, you know. Um, the person, I don't know whether safe or not, will act strange and all that. To get attention. To get attention. So you must discern. Alright, you must discern. The person will get out in the middle of the night, purposely stand in front of a mirror and comb her hair. <laughs> that kind of things, you know. And we all sit there and just... Um, so people want attention, so we have to be careful. But those that are real, you also have to be careful. All right? Do people get demon possessed? Yes. How to deal with it? Get them saved. Get them saved. Not cast out, cast out, cast out. Okay, so now, um, actually that is pretty much what, we, what the questions are. Okay, so this person asks about oppression. So a lot of things about demon possession and all that. Um, oppression. What is oppression? Or, that's, or rather, we want to make sure people understand. Can a Christian be possessed by evil spirit? Can or not? Cannot, right? Why? Because we just say you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost in you is strong. So you, do you need to worry? We should not need to worry that we'll be possessed. But you don't want to play with those things. They can attack you. Right? Like we studied in the Bible. Now, but can a person be oppressed? What is oppressed? Okay, oppressed means constantly um, under um, attack. And, uh, for some reason, it attacks you and usually because you have sinned in your life, you don't want to confess, you don't want to repent. And then there can be oppression. You get very troubled uh, by um, things. So those things can happen. And what, is the, what do you do as a Christian? Go and cast out? No. You confess your sin. You repent, clean up your life, right? Ask God to deliver you. That is what you do. Understand? Okay. It is not um, go and call pastor to come and cast out. And what's that? Elleris Old Church to sprinkle holy water in your house, right? I can pray over a, a water hose and the tap for ten years, and then I turn on and hose your house. Still no use, all right? No holy water, no such thing. Okay, so people believe in all this? No, no not, not that. Um, so, uh, is a Christian supposed to live in fear? For God has not given you the spirit of fear. Okay, so don't keep talking about these things. You ask me, I explain to you from the scriptures. Then you move on. Don't get obsessed with these things. Do you understand what I'm saying or not? 
People can get obsessed with it. And children, are you afraid of the dark? Do you af are you afraid of going to the toilet at night alone? How come? It's dark, but you don't have to fear because do you believe in Jesus as your saviour? So he is your protector. So you have no fear. You should not need to fear. God said, I've not given you a spirit of fear. Right? So you don't think about it, you just go. Don't fear. How many don't like the dark? How many don't like to walk alone? I don't like because of robbers. <laughs> All right? They are real. All right? Now, spirits are real, but as Christians, we should not need to fear robbers or anything. God will protect us. Now, we should not live in constant fear. That is not the life that God meant for the Christian. You don't go to the toilet for your whole life. Mommy, please go to the toilet with me. Don't, all right? Then you constantly live in fear. That's not what God wants you to live. Don't read. Do you, do you all read horror stories? Ghost story books? Parents, don't let your children ever read those. They are very popular. When you read those, the images keep come. All right? These are written by unbelievers. They are used by Satan to try and constantly make you live in fear instead of um, victory. All right? So then you watch those ghost movies when I was young. Then the image keeps coming back at night. You lie in bed, you think the hands are going to grab you. You know, all those things. Then, over time, you stop watching it. After some time, the fear goes away. And the more you read God's Word, the more faith you have. All these things goes away. Goes away. Alright? So remember that. So don't... So I hope I've answered your questions. Don't keep going back to talk about these things. You know what the Bible says? Done with it. Don't, don't spend your time talking about the devil. Spend your time talking about who? Christ. Focus on Christ. Okay? So we talk about these things. Okay, any last questions? Yes. Uh, yes. People who have experienced healing in their lives, um, they do actually talk, share a lot with other Christians. They share? Okay. They share their experiences with them, what they went through, and um, what, what would be their um, attitude in uh, their understanding of what was happening? Okay, so the question is this. Sometimes people get healed, all right? And then they go around sharing about what? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so now... Um, so the person say, well, um, it happened to me, okay, I did this, and then I got healed. Hmm? Well, number one, you have to ascertain it is really a, a miracle, like my mother's case is a miracle, alright? So now, if that happens, the person keep talking about it and ask people to, don't always just trust in the word, you must trust in that experience, alright? So we just learn. Does God deal the same way with everyone? So we tell him God does not deal the same way with everyone. The danger of that is this. Now, what happens if God wants me to die of cancer? That is God's will for my life. Or God wants me to get cancer so that I will serve Him better. Hmm? Okay? Then another person is not God's will for the person to have cancer. So the person got cancer, God healed him. And then this person keeps telling you, you just believe God will heal you, God will heal you, God will heal you. It happened to me. Then you're forcing your experience and God's will for your life upon another person. You know what will happen? The person after some time will say, God did not heal me. God did not heal me. God did not heal me. When God is like, because I want you to have that. Because I want you to have that. That is good for you. Because of that, you won't sin. Remember Apostle Paul, what did he have in his flesh? A thorn in the flesh. He had a real physical sickness. We do not know what that is. He asked God to remove it. God did not choose to remove it. Because God knows that is going to keep him humble. Right? So you say, if the person said, then you should tell Paul, God will heal you. It happened to me. You should say, no. You cannot force your experience on another person. Because that they do that because their concept is, a Christian should never be sick. That's why you say, be healed, be healed, be healed. What if it's God's will for the person to be healed? Not to be healed. Alright? So number one is that. And be careful of when, when God does heal you, be careful of how you share. Don't share like as if that person, God must heal that person. God is God. It's up to Him. Don't share it like that. Alright? 
and don't share it in glory to self. Sometimes people share like, what well, you know, because I'm so obedient, that's why God healed me. Then the person starts with you, or then there must be something wrong with me. I'm disobedient, therefore I'm sick. Some people are like that. They want to share so that they show people how holy I am and therefore God healed me. And then the poor Christian who is also holy, like Job, right? He's also holy. They say, because of your sin, you are sick. Okay? So, so that, and then when a person starts to say, my ex don't just always depend on the word, experience. What is the definition of the person? He's a liberal, a modernist, a new evangelical, where my experience is more important than God's word. God's word is very clear. He chooses to heal, he chooses not to heal. But because of my experience, I got healed by doing this. Therefore, everyone must have the same experience. Now you make experience above God's word. When God makes it very clear, I don't choose to heal everyone. I choose to have some people in sickness. But because, just because you're healed, I expect that everybody be healed. Then your experience is more important than God's word. All right? So if people share that, say, yes, maybe that's God's will for you. That's how God chooses to heal you. you know, thank God for that. And that's it. No, don't keep telling people that God must heal the other person. What happens when God don't heal? The family will begin to blaspheme. Have Christian friends who go to another an, uh, unbeliever's home and tell the unbeliever parents like, oh, "Don't worry, your son will be healed." You know, I got healed. I got cancer, and I got healed. Don't worry, God will heal your son. He's a Christian. The son died of cancer. What does the mother say? False God. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 13. Then we close. So the person who read that, please ask him to read this verse. Okay, read this verse. Deuteronomy chapter 13. So those person that say, Ah, God, God will heal, God will heal. I prophesy already. You know charismatic churches or those the belief in miracle healing, they say that, right? They prophesy, God already told me that you will be healed. Don't worry. Then tomorrow the person died. Okay, so now, what does God say about this? Deuteronomy chapter 13, shall we read verses 1 to 5 together? If there arise among you a prophet or a dream of dreams, and give thee a sign or wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, Okay, so for those that say you will be healed, they prophesy, and then you don't get healed. What does God command this prophet to be done to this prophet? Read. And you don't read and then you don't concentrate. What did God say? If, 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 if nothing, what the prophet say or what the vision uh, they, they claim to have, and it did not come through. He shall be put to death. He shall be put to death. That is very serious. Okay? Put to death. Wow. A lot are under death sentence. Alright, finally let's turn to two more passages, then we close. Please turn to Matthew chapter um, 24. You ask the question about, what about they say, Oh, I, um, I saw this vision, I saw the vision, I saw Christ. Christ told me. Christ appeared as a 40 foot tall Christ. And he talked to me. Now, what did Christ talk about the end times? What will happen? Can you look at Matthew chapter 24? Let's read verses 23 and 24 together. 
Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there be, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now if we so real, the signs and the wonders, the prophets, the visions will be very real. But what Christ say? At the end times, signs, great signs and wonders are often the work of false Christ, false prophets. Understand that? During Christ's time, he performed many miracles. But Christ said after that, it will stop. From there on, when you hear of these things, these are the typical things in the end times. Understand? So in the end times, when you hear these things, um, they are not what Christ and the apostles did. Then last verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Now, these are warnings about what it will be at the end times. Alright, chapter 11, shall we read verse, verses 13 to 15 together? 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And marvel not, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Now, these are all warnings. Repeatedly, Christ himself warned. The apostles wrote to the churches and they say, No marvel, don't be surprised. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Can appear to you as an angel of light in a dream, in a vision. Christ already said, don't be surprised. And it can even deceive believers. These are the typical things that will happen in the end times. When you keep hearing these sort are of things, it's Christ's prophecies coming true. Avoid them. Know that they are not, not the thing to get excited and to participate in. Okay, that is not the normal way God works anymore. God works through His Word now. Did God appear in the Old Testament to people? Yes. Did God perform a lot of miracles in the New Testament when He was on earth? Yes. After that, you read the New Testament, no more. Instead, the New Testament warns that after Christ leaves, there will be many false miracles, false workers and angels of light. Okay? So that is not the norm anymore. Okay, any other last, one last urgent question? No? I hope we put this matter to rest and not keep going back to um, uh, going back to all this um, asking about demons and all that. But if you still have, you can ask. All right. If you still have and you're still confused, you can ask. If not, we close in prayer. Now, someone asked, what is the difference between psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs? Someone also asked, can we just have instrumental music? Can, can we worship God with instrumental music?